everyone. Welcome to the Rose Hip Island video diary. This is the March episode or March video for 2024. And um, my name is Hannah and you are tuning in to my studio in Northern Tasmania, Australia. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're interested in finding me on any um, social media, any platforms online, you can search for Rosip Island and I will probably pop up. And that will be on Instagram, Facebook, here on YouTube and Ravelry as well. This is going to be another video about things that I have been knitting on, a little bit of sewing that I have done. And I'm hoping to get to talk a little bit about my challenge for 2024 which is Enjoy Your Stash 2024. And that's um, what you can expect from this video. In Tasmania at the moment, we're having a bit of a heat wave. We have moved into autumn, according to the calendar, not according to the weather, I would say. And we've had a long weekend. It's been the hottest days we've had all of this warm season or summer and if i'm look if i look like i am melting that is because i am melting i could open a window but the neighbor has decided to um mow the lawns so i'm just a bit worried that that's going to ruin the sound of this video so um i might just go for it and i'll have a drink ready and i might just take a few breaks if i am just getting a little bit too um hot all right well let's start with uh, me showing you what i am wearing and that will actually um move us a little bit into sewing because i haven't finished anything um I haven't finished any of my knitting, any knitting items, but I have a few sewing projects that I would like to share with you. And the first one is this one that I'm wearing. This is um, a new Vanya dress that I made. And I actually um, did this for my birthday. On my birthday, I decided to um, treat myself to a few hours here in the studio uh, with some new fabric that I, I got the day before. Um, and make another Vanya dress. So this was sort of a, a birthday treat for myself to just take the time to make something fun. So this is the Vanya dress and I do have the pattern here. It's this one here. I purchased this fabric, uh, no, this um, pattern when I was in Sweden back in July, 2023. So that's the dress and I have modified it a bit. I have made it like this before with a v-neck and a um, elastic in the waist. And I actually have that here. And I have, I have shown that before on a video. I have that here. It needs a bit of an iron, but um, I have one of those that I put, um, had a little bit of a hard time with the waist on this one, but I did manage to get a little bit of elastic in there. It is a very big uh, drapey dress, sort of um, going to the beach, um, loose fitted. With that dress that I made before, I realized that having that deep v-neck was not really something that um, made it easy for me to wear. And especially here in summer, if I'm after a long flowy dress to wear at the beach or something, it's often on a day when I want to protect myself from the sun a bit. And I just really prefer necklines like this. So in this second one I did, um, I modified it so that the neckline, I, I changed the neckline. I also changed a bit how I sewed it up because in the original, there's a lot of um, not doing full seams and just like sewing things together. There was a lot of um, going back and sewing gaps and it was just really hard for me to get a nice finish on the dress. So with this one, I just simplified as much as I could. Um, so it's, it's the same um, fabric pieces, but I have just changed how I sew them together to just make things 
easier for me and I did not do a um, open side I can't remember what that's called but it's just one full dress and it's sort of ankle length I'll stand up and I'll show you um, I just uh, I did these two that's not in the pattern and just a, um, a band for the waist so you can see it's it's quite big and you you, you tie it up like that um, and I'm very happy with it I was able you know to make this um, make most of it in a few hours in the afternoon and then I just finished it up the following day um, and the fabric was just some I don't know some viscosity type of fabric that I found on the the clearance shelf in spotlight so it was I can't remember if, if it was six dollars a meter or eight dollars a meter so I could get three meters and get a nice dress out of it so um, I feel a little bit like someone maybe who works in a museum or an art gallery where <laughs> when I wear it especially with this new hairstyle that I have um, but it's 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 fun and I had a really lovely time making it spending just some time here in the studio working on it another dress that I have made and this is something that I made earlier on this summer uh, is this one here which is the slow Sunday dress by Ellie and Mac and I, I purchased a PDF pattern online uh, it has a few different uh, options for the um, the top and and also the skirt different um variations of it so I did the I can't even remember was this sort of back racer back maybe I did that um I'm very happy with it. I'm very happy how it, how it uh, came out. This is again some uh, fabric from the clearance shelf at Spotlight. It's a um, a jersey fabric, uh, very drapey. I can't. I think it's a maybe with a bamboo viscose content in it, something like that. Um, yes. Yeah, so I have made that as well. Um. And I think I might make more of these. It's not, um, I haven't really worn this one because I don't really know when, I guess it's more of a, when you're on holiday, when you're at home in summer. Um, but it was fun to make a different type of um, a dress, different style dress. And I always enjoy when you know you get the pattern pieces all together and they all just magically work together and um, you get a, a nice garment. So that's that one, the Slow Sunday dress. And I have made some other just jersey type dresses. Um, just my regular sort of making a t-shirt with an A-line skirt attached to it. And I have a few of them now, and I, I am um, now I'm trying to um, make other things like this, just to have dresses for different uses and different occasions, and also mostly really just to practice my skills and practice how I work with different type of fabrics and um, create different um, different silhouettes and you know just creating different things with fabric really I do so yes and then I have also made a, um, a few bags and I, I have a lot of I have a lot of project bags for knitting and um, but I also have a lot of fabrics that I would just really like to make into bags um, and every now and then I will I will make a project bag um, but what I've made recently was another one, and this is a remake of something that I made before. I made another one of these bags. This pattern I found in the op shop, and I made one a while ago, and I think I showed that. I can't remember when it would have been, maybe a year ago. And I had some new fabric that I also found in an op shop, 
and I thought it'd be fun in the bag and it was this one here it's beautiful beautiful fabric so I had that and I had this fabric from a pair of curtains I think I bought them in an op shop in Sweden actually probably 15 years ago so I had that in my stash and I thought it went well with that one I also had this fabric in my stash and I had some green corduroy and so yes I made another one of those bags and I really enjoy um, the other one that I have in different fabrics um, just for putting all my different project bags in so that's that's you know how I carry around the four to five pro projects that I normally have um, ongoing at the same time I just pop them in this bag and it can sit sort of like a basket next to the sofa or I can just take them all with me and um, head off have it have them all with me in the car when we go traveling or whatever and the first one I made I thought it was a bit fiddly when I made it it seemed to have lots of different um, parts in the instructions that I didn't seem totally necessary and it was a bit hard to sort of do some of the seams when everything was all done I thought and all the finishing touches of it I thought was a bit tricky but this time doing it a second time I was I guess more prepared for those things so I, I found it um, quite easy to make oh, sorry and it's just fun to use different um, fabrics and of course in a bag you can just use different type of fabrics different colors and everything compared to what you can um, in clothes so that was one of the bags that I have made this summer and um, once I've talked about my knitting projects, I'm just going to put all those project bags back into this bag and take it back inside to my knitting corner. <laughs> all right, so I have kept knitting through summer and the hot weather, but as I think I mentioned earlier, I have not finished any of my knitting things, but I, I made a bit of progress. And I have done quite a bit of dream knitting as well, which I might be able to, um, well, I might get a time to share that with you as well. Let's see where we start. Let's start with this bag. And here we have my Starburst Lace Yoke Tea. Which I have shown before it's wrinkly from being in the bag last time when I showed this I had some problems because I was changing my ball of yarn and there was a color difference I did say then that I thought it was because maybe the outside of the ball had got a bit of sun damage to it and it was just lighter so changing from the inside of one ball to the outside of one ball just made a very big difference so I did rewind it to get it starting from the darker and um, alternated a few rows rounds when I changed over the, the yarn and I think it worked quite well. The yarn that I am using is the Candide which is a wool cotton and recycled fiber yarn from the rarum natura and this was something that i purchased um at a wool shop in stockholm Makeri Fjordon, and um it's my souvenir yarn for my enjoy your stash 2024 <laughs> i have one ball left and I have, um, I think I finished the body. I might do another couple of rounds of the ribbing and then I'm going to make, I'm going to half what I have left of the yarn and make the sleeves however long I can. Um, what 
else. This pattern is a free pattern. And I found it really nice. It had some different things in it, in the construction. Um, you divide up the back and the front after you divide for the sleeve and just knit back and forth of the front and back and forth on the back before you then join them for the underarm. And it does have some darts for the bust and a, I did a little bit of waist shaping on it as well. So it has um, a few things going on in it, a few things that I haven't done before, so that's always nice. I still have the needle in here. What I'm going to try to do for the first time is a, an, Italian, an Italian bind off. Um, and that's probably what is now the, the block for me to keep going on this. I just have to get myself motivated to watch a tutorial and understand Italian bind off and then do it. I would like to have this tea ready when the weather cools enough for me to be able to wear it at work. So, yeah, I think it's nice. Very nice for a, a free pattern, I must say. The designer is Elaine Phillips. The Starburst Lace Yoke. And I do have most of a skein left for the sleeves and a little bit of what I want to do on the body. I have another garment that I'm working on and that is the Spring Fling sweater I think by Josefine Ökström, a Swedish designer and podcaster and I have done quite a bit of progress I think from from last time I've, I think I'm getting to the point of the body where it's it's long enough so this has been a bit of a just, well, mindless knitting really. Um, I am using Aoma Finul in the color 0471. This is, how much is there per 50 grams? 175 meters per 50 grams. I'm doing this on a, I think it's a two millimeter needle, maybe two and a half. Um, so it's it's taking its time. I'm not managing to get a very nice um, even fabric. Some of it might fix itself in washing and blocking, but I think it's just going to have a homemade look to it. That's the good thing when you add mohair or something like that to a garment it sort of evens it out a bit but I just it's just too hot for me to have mohair in all my jumpers and cardigans the nice thing with this spring fling pattern is this broken rib raglan increase that then continues on the side of the body and in the pattern there's this um what is it called? The hem, divided hem, split, split hem. And I haven't decided if I'm going to do that. I don't normally wear jumpers with a split hem, but maybe I should just do it to have something different. Don't know. I have, I am, I'm getting to the end of the fourth skein. And I have two skeins left, so I'm thinking I'll do one skein for each sleeve and hopefully that will make my sleeves long enough. So I have been working on this quite a bit in the evenings when it's when it's cool enough to work with this 100% wool. I love the colour, I think it will be nice. 
So that's the second garment I'll be working on. And for my Enjoy Your Stash 2024, I think this will go as a gift yarn. Um, because I purchased it with a gift voucher that my mum gave me. So I think that will be it. It could also be favourite brand because I really do like Rauma Finun. So there's a few options there with what I'll, I'll do. Um, I'm hoping I've, I've got the my Enjoy Your Stash um, grid um, in the screen for you to be able to see what I'm talking about. I have actually, since my last video, started a third garment, um, which is a bit silly because those ones that I have were all stocking stitch now and I just really need to get through it to actually have the finished garment. But I have so many garments that I want to make and when I'm just knitting on the body on the ones that I have ongoing, you know, I just get really tempted to start a lace yoke or a color work yoke or something. So I did start another um, top and this is a top that I, I've, I've cast it on before and tried it. What I used then was some, let's see if I have it here. I cast it on before using some Holst Coast yarn, but I didn't like how it came out. Uh, and also I misread the chart of it. Um, <laughs> so I ripped that out. But I did not give up on this um, tea and I started again. And another yarn from <laughs> my summer in Sweden in 2023 was this Bella yarn. It's a Lana Grossa yarn. I purchased this um, at Garn Circus, a yarn shop in Helsingborg, which is a, a very nice yarn shop with lots of interesting yarn in it. Uh, and this is a new to me blend, which I think is also in my Enjoy Your Stash 2024 grid. It is 35% cotton, 25% alpaca, 30% nylon, and 10% merino wool. And it is 250 meters per 25 grams. And I purchased four of these. And I was thinking first to maybe hold it double with something else, and I wasn't sure, but then I thought, oh, I'm just going to try to have it just on its own to avoid making another very hot top. And I made the, what is it called? Improvisation is this top. It's the name and it's by Anna Kduya. And this pattern, it's about four Australian dollars to purchase and it has three different um, options for the, the lace. I have completed the lace and now have divided. It's similar to the other top, the lace yoke, Starburst lace yoke top, in that you, you divide, divide it, so you need to only the front back and forth and only the back back and forth um before you then join under the sleeve i haven't actually read if there's any sort of um shaping on the front or the back for this i've tried it on and it's really nice it's going to be like an, a loose um over the top of a black or white or I don't know any color singlet or maybe over a dress just for a bit of fun um, color and a bit of warmth it is really quite see-through but it was a lot of fun to knit and I quite 
I quite uh, like this yarn. I still have this much left on the first skein. So I can, I think I can even make long sleeves on this. We'll see. Now, of course, I have a third garment that I'm working on the body, just stocking that stitch. Um, I, now I really have to try to finish one of them before I cast on something new. Those are the, the main things that I am knitting on currently. I do have a sock project, a hat project, but I have not really touched those, to be honest. Um, I have a bit of dream knitting um, that sort of fits in a little bit with my Enjoy Your Stash 2024. Um, maybe I'll just talk about that first. So you will have seen the grid hopefully and this Enjoy Your Stash 2024 is like my make nine really for this year where I have just chosen nine different prompts for yarn choices that I make this year for my um, projects and it's it's not hard at all to get things to fit in there often I find that my yarn fits into several categories so it's just something fun it's just um, yeah just a, a challenge that is not going to be hard to to <laughs> succeed with I think and it's just making me um also get a bit of variation in in new yarn old yarn trying out new things and, and and those type of things so if you want to um you can join in and um show me uh, what you're working on in your enjoy your stash enjoy your stash 2024 you can use the hashtag and uh yes that'd be fun if you want to join me I might even actually, because I haven't done this for a while, I haven't done a giveaway or anything like that. So that's actually something that um, I will do. And I think I will, for that, do some Rosie Island hand-dyed yarn. Um, yes, I'll, I think I'll, I'll announce it across the social media platforms. But uh, yes, look out for that. A bit of a, a fun giveaway if you join the Enjoy Stash 2024. To dream knitting then. I'm sorry, it's hot and I'm melting. <laughs> All right, let's work through the heat. And let me show you. Dream knitting. I have a few things. And I'll tell you first about the Teddy Sip, which is a jacket with a sip, Teddy Sip, and he made out of a boucle in, in the original. And I have this um, sort of boucle, but it's not wool. I think it's a viscose or something. It might have wool in it as well. I have uh, a few of these skeins that I purchased in an op shop. And I thought they would be, the bottle green, they will make a cool jacket, I think. And I've been swatching a bit and I've tried it with um, this Surlia. So these are things that I've had in my stash. So they will potentially be old stash in my Enjoy Your Stash 2024. Um, I've swatched them together. I've swatched just the boucle, just to see the pattern is for 11 stitches per 10 centimeters in stockinette. I have this and you can, in the bottom half, I've used two yarns together. So it's a fingering weight, 100% wool with the boucle and at the top is only the boucle held um, just one strand. And I don't know, it's very airy as you can see. <laughs> So I do like having a yarn to fill in those gaps in the boucle. And I thought having the quite different colors would give the fabric a bit more depth, but I don't know that that's the right color. But I think, I think it will work. I think 
this would like would be fun as a jacket um so that's something that is on my radar the teddy sip by joan ho i have also recently purchased this drops air from a d stash on ravelry and that's also um in the green family so maybe that is what i should use so i might also swatch with those two together so that will be new yarn in the in my grid <laughs> and then what else have i got oh another thing that came on my radar is a pattern from this book knitting um for all of their 20 modern knitting patterns and um, i borrowed this from the library recently and when i first looked through it i thought there's not really anything there that really gets me you know super interested but then i've been um wanting to make a robe or a long cardigan basically it started as a way for me to just use up a lot of my yarn that is nice and i don't want to give it away but i don't know what to do with it all and i thought oh in winter at home it'd be lovely to have you know i would love to have a woolen robe but it's so expensive so that's not going to happen but i thought i have all the wool why don't i make like a knit a long cardigan and use it as a rope really with like the over laying size and the um what's it called ribbon the band in the <laughs> in in the waist um that'd be really fun i would look like a crazy lady but it would be nice and warm in winter so it can't it can't be bad can it that would be fun so and in this um book was the Charles Gray cardigan and I thought that that um and it's like it has that sorry I shouldn't be showing the actual pattern um and I thought yes that might work and then I read from one of the projects on Ravelry and I said oh there was a rata and I had to email knitting for olive and they emailed me the the errata and I thought oh, it's just, this is just too complicated no so I, I put away and I thought oh, I'll just go into the knitting for olive website and see if they've put a errata on their website and they have so I think I'm going to try it because I've also looked at a lot of long cardigans and robes on Ravelry and I haven't found anything really that's well, anything that's better than the Charles Grey cardigan. So, who knows? Maybe I will um, start making that at some point. I think just like with using different colours and different yarn, it will just keep being interesting, hopefully, because it will be a lot of knitting. And it could be fun to mull and do... Because I think it's like 13 stitches per, um, yes, 13 stitches per 10 centimetres in stockinette stitch. So I could probably do two or three strands of yarn together. So mull it, I could stripe it, just make it super crazy. Maybe I'll do some colour work. Oh my gosh. Yes. I just really want to do that. So far, it's just still too hot to knit on anything like that. But that's something that I would like to do. And the last thing, no, not the last thing. I have two more things. Another thing that I've had in my library and in my queue on Ravelry for a very long time is the Inara Wrap by Amber O'Brien. And the reason is, let's see. Not very good. I have this purple gradient there's five of those and i have a denim blue gradient also five these are three of the five um i have those that i've i've dyed the blue ones are left over from a shawl i did and then the purple ones are mini skeins i think 
Um, I have those and I've been wanting to make this Inara wrap, making one end going from dark blue to light blue and then dark purple to light purple going the other way. And it sort of stripes, um, what's this? Anyway, <laughs> um, <clears throat> I've, I've had that wrap on in my queue for a long time purchased a pattern and everything but I never started making it because um I don't know I got a bit over wraps and shawls and things like that but I, I don't make them many very often anymore and now I actually think that I'm ready I'm ready to make one it'll be fun um and you know it's my my special hand dyed yarn so I would um I would enjoy that and I think with those colors it would be quite wearable I do have uh, one of my wraps at work now where it can get really cold sometimes like the vents have this really cool air every now and then through the day and I use one of my advent wraps um to put on then and you know it's like a blanket and that's really nice so I think I'm ready for a wrap another wrap in my life so that's another dream knitting project so that's old stash if I'm looking at the enjoy a stash then the last thing is one of the patterns that came out of the recent collection from Yarbo, i think so the swedish yarn company that has a lot of patterns a lot of patterns and they're all for free on their website and in their recent collection i think it was the recent one it has like had like an ocean theme different patterns and they have a few different Scandinavian designers that design for them. And now they also had, um, I think her name is Kristen Drysdale, who is, I think, in the US, but she has some family connection to Scandinavia, I think. And she does a lot of um, color work type patterns. And for this Yabu collection, she uh, designed a, a vest, a color work vest called Archipelag. She made a, a ladies, men's and a child's one. And it's just one of those vests with lots of color work for the ladies um, pattern. It's like a crew neck. I think for the men's version is a v-neck. There were some slight differences. Um, I really like those color work vests and I have a lot of smaller quantities of 100% fingering sport weight um, wool. I don't know if I would wear it, but I probably would. I probably would. Why not? So that's something that I also have in my dream knitting. That's all um, of the stuff that I had out to share with you today. It is very hot. I've run out of something to drink out here. I am um, heading to the gym in, in a little bit. And um, then it will be movie night with the kids and then back to work tomorrow after a long weekend. Okay, I think that's what I wanted to share with you today. A bit of knitting that I'm excited about and sewing that I've had lots of fun making. There um, will be the the giveaway somehow in relation to the Enjoy Your Stash 2024. Keep your eyes out for that. Um, I think that's what I'll do anyway. Anyway, some sort of giveaway will happen and will be my hand dyed yarn. Um, hmm, but that that's it for this video it is hot and uh, I think I need to go and fill up my drink and um, get outside and feel the breeze <laughs> thank you so much for joining me and I hope that you are well wherever you are in the world thank you so much for following me and um, being here with me I really appreciate it uh, it's it's funny. I've looked a bit on the YouTube stats. Well, not really the stats. I've just looked back at on you know some of the numbers over the last few videos, and it seems like there's always just under 400, 400 people that view the video, and about the same number of 
thumbs up every time. So I do feel like I have my I have my crowd of people that pretty set. I don't think I'll ever grow beyond what it is. Um, I've sort of reached my my group of people and I am really really happy about that and I really appreciate um you being out there and following along so thank you so much and um, I hope to see you next time bye